evening, everybody. My name is Michelle Rollinson, and I want to welcome you to the Congregational Church of Littleton. No matter who you are or where you are in life's journey, you are welcome here. So this evening for Wondering Wednesday, we are going to continue with our Jesus Storybook Bible by Sally Lloyd-Jones. And we are going to read The Servant King. It's the Last Supper from Mark 14 and John 13 to 14. It was Passover, the time when God's people remembered how God had rescued them from being slaves in Egypt. Every year they killed a lamb and ate it. The lamb died instead of us, they would say. But this Passover, God was getting ready for an even greater rescue. Mm, Passover. Huh, they're remembering. Do you guys remember when we read that? Ba a while back, way back here, when they were rescued and they left Egypt and they had a lot to go through. Right? And a long way to go. Okay, let's see. Jesus and his friends were having the Passover meal together in an upstairs room. But Jesus' and his friends were arguing. What about? They were arguing about stinky feet. Stinky feet? Yeah. That's right. Stinky feet. Why do you guys think they were arguing about stinky feet? Huh. Do you guys ever argue about stinky feet at home? I know I do. Sometimes it's like, whose feet stink? Why are our feet so stinky? I wonder why they were arguing about stinky feet. Now, the thing about stinky feet back then was that people didn't wear shoes. They only wore sandals, which might not sound unusual, except that the streets in those days were dirty. And I don't mean just dusty dirty, right? I mean really stinky dirty. Well, with those cows and horses everywhere, you can imagine the stuff on the street that ended up on their feet. Oh, yeah. That would make for some stinky feet, don't you guys think? Mm-hmm. So anyway, someone had to wash away the dirt. But it was a dreadful job. Who on earth would ever dream of volunteering to do it? Only the lowliest of servant. So they're saying that they need people to wash their feet, right? I wonder if they know how to wash their own feet. Hmm. But they have servants to do that. They're saying only the lowliest of servants will wash feet, right? So somebody's got to wash their feet for them. I wonder who it's going to be. I'm not the servant, Peter said. Nor am I, said Matthew. Quietly, Jesus got up from the table, took off his robe, picked up a basin of water, knelt down, and started to wash his friend's feet. Now wait a minute, wait a minute, hold on just a second. Didn't they just say only the lowliest of servants would wash feet? Is Jesus the lowliest of servants? Why is Jesus washing their feet? I wonder what Jesus was thinking when he decided to wash their feet. And I wonder what the disciples were feeling then when Jesus was going to wash his friend's feet. Because to them, like, just like they said, Peter said, I'm not a servant. And Matthew said he wasn't either. But Jesus is going to wash their feet? I wonder what's going through everybody's mind right now. Let's read on. You can't, Peter said. He didn't understand Jesus being the servant king. <gasps> the servant king. If you don't let me wash away the dirt, Peter, Jesus said, you can't be close to me. Jesus knew that what people needed most was to be clean on the inside. Huh. All the dirt on their feet was nothing compared to the sin inside their hearts. Then wash me, Lord, Peter said, tears filling his eyes. All of me. Oh, I wonder how Peter was feeling right then. Jesus is explaining why he's washing their feet, right? You want to be close to him? Let him do that, because not only is he going to wash his feet, he's going to help you wash out the inside. One by one, Jesus washed everyone's feet. I'm doing this because I love you, Jesus explained. Do this for each other. <gasps> Whoa! So he might not be the lowliest of servants who usually wash feet, but he is the servant king, right? And he's doing this because he loves his friends. That is the reason for it. Let's keep reading. 
Now, one of Jesus' friends had made a bad plan. No one else knew what the bad plan was, but Jesus knew, and so did Judas. Judas was going to help the leaders capture Jesus for 30 pieces of silver. Go on, Jesus, Jesus said, and Jesus got up from the, the meal, left the room, and walked out into the night. Huh. I wonder how that made Jesus feel when he, know, he knows what's going to happen, right? Jesus knows. Jesus knows what G Judas is going to do, and I wonder why Judas decided to do that. What would he was thinking about? Hmm. Let's keep reading. Then Jesus picked up some bread and broke it. He gave it to his friends. He picked up a cup of wine and thanked God for it. He poured it out and shared it. My body is like this bread. It will break, Jesus told them. This cup of wine is like my blood. It will pour out. But this is how God will rescue the whole world. My life will break and God's broken world will mend. My heart will tear apart and your hearts will heal. Just as Passover lamb died, so now I will die instead of you. My blood will wash away all of your sins and you'll be clean on the inside in your hearts. So whenever you eat and drink, remember Jesus said, I've rescued you. Whoa. What do you think everybody at that table was thinking when Jesus was saying those words? Hmm. What would it be like to be there at that table with Jesus? Wow, lots of wondering there, isn't there? Take some time to think about that. Jesus knew it was nearly time for him to leave the world and go back to God. I won't be with you long, he said. You are, you are going to be very sad, but God's helpers will come, and then you'll be filled up with the forever happiness that won't ever leave. So don't be afraid. You are my friends, and I love you. Then they sang their favorite song and walked up to their favorite place, an olive garden. Wow. That is the end of our story. A lot of wondering happening in here. Wondering about how everybody is feeling in this story. At the, especially at the end of the story. When Jesus says he's not going to be there very long. And that they're all going to be very sad. I wonder what they was going through their minds at that time. And now they're walking up to the Olive Garden. Not the restaurant, mind you. An actual Olive Garden olives. So we're going to stop there and I do want to let you know that we are going to take a break from our Jesus Storybook Bible on our Wondering Wednesdays until January because now we're about to enter a different season, a special season, right, of Advent. And I want us to read and learn a little bit about Advent together. So starting next week, we're going to be reading from our Deep Blue Bible Storybook, Christmas. We're not going to go in order. We're going to bounce around a little bit. But we will read maybe one or two stories from this each Wednesday until we're done with it. So I'll see you guys next time. Thank you so much for joining me. Good night.